these following set theoretic statements are either true or false. I have a bunch of statements here involving set theory and some of our notations, and the null set and the digit zero, or the number zero. So the first one on the top left here says zero is an element of the empty set. So recall that the empty set is the set that has absolutely nothing in it, including zero. Nothing is inside of the empty set at all. So saying that zero is an element of the empty set is a false statement. This statement here is false. In the top right, we have the empty set is an element of the set containing zero. Now if we look at this set, you can see that there's something in it. The thing inside of it, though, is the number zero. Not the empty set. The empty set is different from the number zero. So the empty set is not actually an element here. The only thing inside of the set is the number zero. So this statement is false. Bottom left hand corner, we have the set containing zero is a subset of the empty set. Now subset is a different notation. Subset means that everything in the set on the left has to be in the set on the right. So if we look at the set on the left, the only object that's inside of that set is the number zero. So in order for subset to hold, we'd have to look over at the right hand side and make sure that zero was in the set on the right. However, the set on the right is the empty set. It contains nothing. So this statement is false. Finally, down here we have the empty set is a subset of the set containing zero. Now, the empty set has no elements in it, so there's no way that there would be an element on the left that would not be contained on the right. So finally, we have our first true statement. Also, since this is subset, not equal to, we needed to make sure that the set that was on the right actually did contain something that was not on the left. So this works because zero is an element on the right, but it's not on the left. Okay, well, that takes a little bit of work, a little bit of thinking, so why don't you try a handful on your own here just to see if you can do them individually. So pause the video and see if you can do these four statements. And um, assuming you paused and tried it on your own, let's try to do it together here. So on the top left this time we have the set containing zero is an element of the set containing zero. Now, to be an element of means that object needs to be in the set, but on the right-hand side, the only thing inside of this set is zero, not the set containing zero, right? Only the number zero. So this is a false statement. In the top right, is the set containing zero a subset of the set containing zero? This one's kind of a trick question. If you look on the left, the only thing inside of this set is the number zero, and is it on the right? Certainly it's on the right. However, according to our textbook, when we don't put that extra bar across the bottom, that means we need something that's actually a proper subset and is not equal to. However, this one, the two sets on the left and the right are actually equal, so technically this statement would be false. So one to draw a distinction to the top right would be the bottom left. Down here we have a set containing a null set, and is that a subset or equal to the set containing the null set? So the only thing in the set on the left is an empty set. Is that also on the right? Yes, it is. So this is a true statement. It's okay that they're actually equal because that's allowed for because of the bar underneath the subset symbol. And now finally, one that can be drawn in distinction in case you got the top left incorrect. Here we have on the left the set containing the null set, and we're asking is it an element of the set that contains the set that contains the element, or the empty set rather. So this object, notice, is inside of the set on the right. So this one's actually a true statement. And that helps him maybe to see why the top left was wrong in case you were confused about that.